Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to be taking a fresh look at getting Pat Winlink installed on the Pi. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. So if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you may have seen my original series on getting Pat Winlink running. That video series is long overdue for a remake. The quality of the first series left a lot to be desired. The original was done on a Raspberry Pi running stretch. We now have Buster to work with. And I've learned a few new things uh, in the way we go about doing uh, some of the stuff. So let's go ahead and dive into it and see if we can't get it running on Buster today. So first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and open up our terminal window. Now, I have already ran uh, sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. So, I took care of those before we started the video just to save us some time. We're going to try to get this done in one, uh, one video uh, to get it installed, configured, and get PyRDOP running as well. So, hopefully we can keep this to about uh, 10, maybe 15 minutes, and then we'll break the rig control section out into another video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is move over to the downloads directory with cd downloads. And then let's head over to the PAT webpage so we can download it and get started. All right, uh, from the main page of PAT, and that's at uh, getpat.io. And I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. Uh, but we want to click install. That's going to scroll us to the bottom of the page and then click the download button. That's going to take us over here, and uh, this is something else that's different from the original. I think it was version 0.6.1 when I did the original series. Uh, just a couple of days ago, 0 0.8.0 came out. So that's the latest as of the uh, time of recording of the video. All right, so let's scroll down just a little bit. And right here, this is one we want. You see he even notes it's for the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to right-click on that, and say copy the link location. Back on the Pi, let's use our wget command and paste in the link that we just copied. Hit return and give that just a couple of seconds to download. Pretty small file, so it doesn't take very long at all. All right, so let's just clear the screen and list out our directory. So you can see that we have the file there. So let's use sudo dpackage dp p k g dash i and let's start typing the first few letters of that file name and then hit the tab key on our keyboard to autocomplete go ahead and press return to start the installation and it only takes a couple of seconds so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and configure uh, run the pack configuration to get all of our variables plugged in. So we'll do that by running pat space configure. And that'll bring us into the pack configuration file. So right up at the top, uh, first thing you want to do is enter your call sign. And guys, one thing in this file, if you make a mistake, uh, it, it can potentially create some problems and Pat might not even start. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll show you how to remedy that problem if you do make a, uh, a, a mistake inside of this file. But as long as you're careful uh, typing this information in, you shouldn't run into any problems. Okay, so we got our call sign. So the next is the secure login password. And this is your WinLink password. And it is case sensitive. So if you've got a really old WinLink account, that may be all caps. If you've got a newer one or you've changed it, uh, that may be a mix of lowercase and uppercase. Just make sure you get it correct here. And the next thing we're going to do is come down to where it says locator. And that's going to be our grid square. So I'll give it my grid square. And the last thing I recommend doing is coming down to the HTTP address right here. And I like to take out localhost and replace that with 0.0.0.0. .0 now, the four zeros here, what that does is that allows us to access PAT over a computer network. 
Uh, we don't necessarily have to be at the Pi in order to access the PAT mailbox. One other thing that I do uh, right here is this 8080 that you're looking at is the port number. I always change this. Uh, it, it keeps me from getting into trouble later when I forget uh, something. Maybe I'm installing a web server. Uh, I know on the draws hat uh, that this will not work if you leave it at 8080 because that port is already reserved for something that they do with a draws hat. So I just like to go ahead and change it. I typically default to 5000. Seems to be a good port that doesn't get in the way of other things going on. All right, once you've got that done, let's press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out of it. Now let's go ahead and try to start PAT. So PAT, HTTP, press Return, and you'll see that it's telling us it has started the HTTP service. So let's go ahead and open up the web browser. And I'm going to, uh, right here, type in 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 and that's that port that I mentioned to you before and on the first run you want to go ahead and click allow right here okay let's make the screen a little bit bigger and let's go ahead and try to make our first telnet connection now telnet is just running over the internet uh, it doesn't involve the radio yet we'll get to that in just a second but let's go ahead right here and for our alias we're going to select telnet and let's go ahead and hit connect. And down here in the bottom window, you can see that our connection was successful. So we know up to this point, we've got PAT configured correctly to work with Telnet. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start PAT as a service. Uh, so what this means is PAT will automatically be started and run in the background anytime we boot our computer. If there's some sort of issue with it, it crashes or whatever, the system services will go ahead and restart PAT for you. So back over on the home page, I'm just going to click uh, the documents button here. And once we get over here, we'll click on the web GUI on the right hand side. And then once we're on the web GUI page, Let's scroll down just a little bit until we see running PAT as a background service. So this is only two commands to make this happen. So I'm going to start right here uh, just before the Your Linux username and go ahead and copy that command. So we'll paste that in here and past the at symbol you need to give it your username, uh, your Pi username. Now, if you haven't changed that, it's simply going to be Pi. And I'm running on a bare bones uh, system with nothing else installed. So I'm running Pi here. Most often in my, uh, in, in the, on the Raspberry Pi that I actually use in the field, I've changed my username to my call sign. So if you've made a change uh, to your username, you'll need to include that here. But your username is right over here before the at symbol. So in this case, we'll just say pi. And then back on the page, the other thing we're going to do is grab this command here. So we'll copy it, paste it in, and again, put your username at the very end. It should return you back out to the command prompt. Now, just to verify everything is running and working correctly, let's just go ahead and do a quick reboot. I'll be back with you guys as soon as the machine comes back online. Okay, so now that everything is booted back up, I'm just going to type PIDOF space PAT. Hit the return, and you'll see that we get this number here. That indicates that PAT is up and running. So we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to start anything. It's just running in the background. So let's go ahead and open up the web browser one more time. And if we navigate back to the 127.0.0.1 colon 5000, it brings us back to our PAT mailbox. All good up to this point. Now, let's assume for a second, we'll go ahead and just clear this screen out. Let's assume you made a mistake in the PAT configure file. Let's go back to our home directory with cd space tilde. And then let's move to uh, the WL2K directory. So cd space 
dot wl2k. Once you're inside this directory, we'll list that out, and you'll see this file right here, this config.json. That is your pat configure file. So if you do make a mistake and you can't get pat to start, the easiest thing to do is delete that file. So we'll use the delete command or remove rm space config.json. We'll go ahead and hit return. So if we list out that directory again, you'll see that that file is gone. Now go ahead and try to start pat. We're going to get an error, but that's okay. So pat HTTP. We'll hit return and it says missing my call. That's exactly what we wanted. If we list this command, or I'm sorry, list out this directory again, you'll see that we have a new config.json file. So Pat will automatically create it if it doesn't see one. Now, if we go back to Pat configure, you'll see that we have a new blank file to work with. So just a handy little something, uh, if you do make an error in here because uh, if you deleted one of the commas at the end of one of these lines, so if I take that comma out, Pat will not start even if everything else is correct. So one little syntax error can really mess you up. But now you know the quick and easy way to fix it. Okay guys, I think we'll stop here for today. I was hoping to get this all in one video, but I like to keep my videos around 10 to 12 minutes. And there's just no way to shove it all into one video and get it thoroughly explained. So we'll uh, release the, uh, the second part of this series uh, for the next video coming out. So make sure you click that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.